woman has disappeared. She was visiting from China. One night she went for a walk and never came back. Her family made an emotional appeal today. And as Tim Weeks reports, police are searching for any sign of what's happened to her. Chinese shocking cold case finally solved. Lian Qi Guo, a woman who traveled to Vancouver to see her son who was studying abroad, has vanished. Perhaps the antagonist was already revealed by the episode's title. However, the incident takes unexpected turns, and the police's fishing operation ends up being the key to cracking the case. Rewind the time machine to 2012. On June 8, 2012, a 911 call was made to Vancouver Police Department in Canada. A Chinese student called Tang Yunzi answered the phone. When he reported that his mother had mysteriously vanished, the police opened up an investigation. Our general understanding of what transpired, Wao Lianzi, 47, has been identified as the missing person. Just 20 days ago, she and her husband Tang Ji Hui traveled from Guangzhou, China to Vancouver, a special journey to see his Canadian-based son Tang Yongzi. 25-year-old Tang Yongzi has a degree and a job. Vancouver was amazing for a family of three. For a brief period of time, they booked two rooms at a local B&B. They left Canada for their country of origin on the afternoon of June 7, 2012. When you arrive, leave your car in front of your apartment. He brought his belongings inside and asked his mother to guard the other suitcases outside the flat while he did. He noticed his mother waiting at the door when he left the room. When I emerged, she had left. I first didn't care because I believed I would be visiting a local mall to make a purchase. Yet later, I didn't pick up the phone. I quickly made my way to the B&B where my father was staying. My father claimed that she had abandoned him. The two started to glance about, but nobody could be seen. She likely traveled alone to the airport because the trip was in the afternoon. Father and son with bags hurried to the airport in search of their missing mother. After boarding, Tang Ji Hui discovered that his wife's seat was vacant. The 13-hour travel was extremely painful and stressful. I then contacted the police the following day, June 8th, Canada time. He claimed that his mother, who knew Cantonese rather than English, was concerned for her welfare. She vanished without explanation, and an expert investigative team was promptly organized. The police also detected something very unusual and had to catch a flight home that day. Initially, they thought Guo was attempting to remain in Canada illegally because she did not want to go back to her native country. Departure on intent could thus account for it, but this quickly turned out to be untrue. To start, the Tang's conduct commerce in China, providing highly luxurious food and apparel. In Canada, there is no need to be black, and Tang Zihui went back home. For instance, through the local government, to get in touch with the Chinese consulate general in Vancouver right away. He returned to Canada by plane two days later in order to locate his wife. The husband's health was good. The father and son informed the authorities. Mental disorders and harmful behaviors are absent. The pair frequently visited numerous nations in Southeast Asia and Europe. Due to our furniture export business, we also have clients in the U.S. Tang Jihui makes yearly business travels to the United States and sees his son in Vancouver. My wife, who was in Vancouver for the first time, insisted that her disappearance had nothing to do with his unlawful presence there. When she vanished, her son's car contained her passport, paperwork, and handbag. He may have had a little over $100 in cash. Fear of being taken or kidnapped by a mentally ill person. Every day, the worried father and son held up a missing person sign, searched all of the city's neighborhoods for Miss Squaw. To increase his influence, he also conducted news conferences and interviews with the media. The flail son's quest to find his mother quickly gained attention, particularly in the Chinese community. The public was inspired by the father and son's tenacity and kept track of the progress. Many Chinese villages have offered to help with the hunt, but there has been no response for days. The officers felt something wasn't right. Miss Guo stands out in particular because she is an Asian woman and does not speak the language. Hadn't been supposed to wait this long for a lead. No demand for ransom equals no kidnapping. Therefore, perhaps this isn't merely a case of missing. And when they began, they discovered a problem. 
when there is deliberate information suppression and there are discrepancies regarding the mother's disappearance, Kang Yingzi is reported. He initially concealed the family's rental of two rooms at a B&B, just that he was taking a carpool to pick up his folks and transport them to the airport from his flat to the B&B, convinced the authorities that the three lived separately. In front of the police, he refused to acknowledge he lived next door. In addition, Tang Yongzi remarked, You didn't ask me, I didn't say. This was due to the fact that my English was subpar and I was unable to speak effectively. This response is obviously a little erroneous. He's obligated to provide the police with all the information they require, but he omitted telling me that he lived next door to his mother, which is unusual for a whistleblower. Your mother is no longer there because of the wonderful flail son you demonstrated. When my father returned to Canada, he changed his mind when she was reported missing from her residence. Apparently, the mother vanished from the B&B. He said that it was because his apartment landlord had improperly divided the rent when his father was astonished and inquired as to what was going on, so as not to involve the police and trouble the landlord. Just give me a break. Police entered the B&B and spoke with other guests inside. The three occupants stayed there for around two weeks and little contact with the other renters and appeared to get along well with them. Because the mother and son get along so well, the police stopped their investigation. We continue to treat it like a regular missing persons case. There has been no development two weeks later. Publicly, the spokesperson stated that he could not completely rule out the chance of accidents. Despite the fact that they both struggled to conceal their sadness, thoughts persisted that Miss Guo's wealth will ensure her safety at home. The cops have increased their staffing and have started scouring some grassy wastelands. However, Miss Guo was never located. Father and son are equally heartbroken because there is no lead in the investigation. Because it is impossible to delay business in China, Tang Ziyu was urged to return first by his son Tang Yongzi. Well, there's no use in waiting, so please phone me if anything changes, alright? Only count on the cops to get in touch with him now that the search for his mother is no longer ongoing. July 20th, 2012 the Integrated Homicide Investigation Unit of Canada received a formal referral of the case, or IHIT. They believed that Miss Guo had been in an accident. The last two family members she was in touch with may have been involved, albeit they are unsure if Tang Ziyu or Tang Yongzi were involved. The alleged murder of a lady by her 25-year-old son, according to criminologist at Simon Fraser University, is very exceptional especially given the possibility that Yung Zi will Tang planned to kill his mother. Following the discovery of his mother, Lian Zi Guo's severely decomposed remains in a suitcase on Harwood Island off the Sunshine Coast in late July, Tang was charged with first-degree murder on Friday, according to the RCMP. Guo, 47, had not been seen or heard of since June when she and her husband traveled from China to Vancouver to see their son. Shortly after his mother vanished in Richmond, Tang, who was in Vancouver on a student visa, pleaded with the public to get in touch with the authorities if they have any information. One month after Guo vanished, the Integrated Homicide Investigation Team classified the incident as a homicide. Police had not revealed Guo's cause of death or their motive. On Friday, Sergeant Jennifer Pond told media that Tang might have also intended to murder his father. Both a first-degree murder accusation and a charge of counseling to commit indictable offense will be brought against Tang at his next court appearance. With that, we have come to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and also press the bell icon so you can watch the upcoming videos. Also, share your thoughts in the comment box.